Okay, this is the big one, right? Galaxy S24 Ultra, iPhone 15 Pro Max, which is best? Which should you buy? Which would I buy? And of course, this is all just my opinion. You are absolutely welcome to disagree. And I want you to let me know which one you think wins this test, which is the best phone in the comments below at the end of the video. But just to be clear, this video is not sponsored by anyone. I do not have a big fat check from Samsung or Apple sat on my desk, unfortunately. So if you are gonna spend over a thousand pounds of your hard earned money, and these two are pretty similarly priced, which should you go for? Well, let's talk money first. And going by retail price in the UK and the US, the iPhone is £50 or $100 cheaper. And that gets you 256 gigs of storage on both. Now, Samsung do offer more deals and bundles, so actually it might end up being cheaper overall, although iPhones do hold their value longer. And they'll give me more for a trade-in. Apple's offering £400 for my 13 Pro Max from a couple of years ago, whereas Samsung will give me just 290 for my equally old S21 Ultra. As always with pricing, lots of variables. It varies by country and currency and when you buy it and deals and all those things. But baseline, the iPhone is a touch cheaper. I wouldn't say it's a deciding factor between them. But after the price, what's the most important thing to consider when buying a new phone? That's right, the color. Okay, maybe not. Although Samsung do have more options available, particularly with their exclusive online colors. Conveniently though, I do have both phones in, well, basically the same color. Natural titanium on the iPhone, titanium gray on the S24. Now it does kind of look like Samsung copied Apple, right? Titanium, titanium. But realistically, the development cycles are much longer than the sort of three or four months between these guys actually launching. So I'm sure they've been working on that for a long time. And titanium does offer advantages like, well, more durability. And in the case of the iPhone, it's significantly lighter than the stainless steel they were using previously. So the 15 Pro Max is noticeably lighter and more comfortable to use than previous Pro Maxes. And it's actually lighter than the S24 Ultra. We're talking 220 21 grams versus 232. Although the S24 is a slightly bigger phone, so it kind of works out feeling pretty similar in your hand. You can see though, I have dropped my iPhone. I dropped it pretty early on actually. And if you can get the light, there's a little ding in the glass there. That's not titanium, only the frame is it's still glass back here with the ceramic shield glass at the front here. Both phones are IP68 water and dust resistant. We have USB-C ports on both. Finally, Apple got there eventually. Although right now it is only the latest iPhone 15s that do have one. Both have fantastic stereo speakers, though I found the S24 Ultra does get a fair bit loud Louder, although at the highest volumes, the sound does distort and get a little bit tinny. At regular volumes, I really can't choose between them. I would say they're equally good to my untrained ears. Oh, and remember, in the US, the iPhone 15 series is eSIM only. There is no physical SIM cards tray, but that is only in the US. Here in the UK, Europe, and everywhere else, we do have a physical SIM card tray and also eSIM support. Now, front and center are these big, bright, beautiful screens. And this year, both phones have slimmed down their bezels. And you can see here the chin on the S24 Ultra is pretty much halved over last year's S23 Ultra. And like the iPhone, all S24s now come with a flat rather than curved screen. And I think most people agree that's a good decision. You're not getting that slight darkening and reflections on the edges. And it does mean you can now use the S Pen right up to the edge of the screen. And speaking of the S Pen, this is probably the first main unique selling point of the S24 Ultra because in all but name, this is the S24 Note. Now they have slightly reduced the size of the pen this year, but not significantly. And functionally, it is the same as before. We haven't really had many new features for the S Pen in a couple of years. But for more precise handwritten notes, for doodling, for drawing, for photo editing, and also my personal favorite using it as a remote shutter for the camera, it is a nice extra to have, and it does make the Ultra stand out from the crowd. Sadly, no S Pen on the iPhone, although we do get the action button. Does that count as a feature? I have it set to do not disturb, so essentially still a mute switch for me, but you can customize it to launch pretty much any app. You can use it as a shutter button. Still, in terms of design, these are both very big phones. You are going to feel them in your pocket. Although between the two, the S24 is definitely bigger. The ultra squared off corners and boxy design, and the fact that it has a 0.1 inch bigger screen, while you are getting a little bit more usable screen space, and of course a smaller hole punch selfie camera, it is personal preference, but I do find the iPhone more comfortable to hold, and I absolutely love the dynamic island. 
I think we were all a bit skeptical at first of this because there wasn't a ton of use cases, but over the last couple of years since they introduced this on the 14s last year, the 14 Pros, now it's on all iPhone 15s, there are so many more apps that take advantage of it. Most of the time it's there as like a at a glance notification window for everything from your boarding time and gate number, the ETA for your Uber, timers, calls, music. You do lose a bit of screen, but it does have a functional use and I really like it. So we have these lovely big screens, 6.7 inches, 6.8 inches on the Ultra, both with dynamic 1 to 120Hz refresh rates. And while the S24 Ultra is sharper, if you switch to the Quad HD resolution, I suspect most of us would leave it at the default Full HD, which does save some battery, but then means the iPhones are touch sharper, although there's not much in it. But there is something that's caught my eye. Can you guess what I'm talking about? Just look at the difference in reflections. The S24 is using new Gorilla Glass armor, which is 75% less reflective and versus the ceramic glass we have on the iPhone and basically any other phone, which is like a glossy mirror, essentially, is one of the most underrated features and upgrades of the S24 Ultra. The downside, there is a slight compromise, is the screen isn't quite as vibrant. Visually, side by side with the S23, you can see the S24s just a little bit less saturated, but I don't think it's particularly significant. And all day long, I would take this anti-reflective screen over losing a few percent of vibrancy. But what do you think? Is this a big deal for you? And while both phones do get incredibly bright, the S24 Ultra peaks at 2600 nits outdoor with its vision booster versus a peak outdoor brightness of 2000 nits on the iPhone. So it's brighter, it's less reflective, and it also gets dimmer. Both phones on the home screen, that is a difference in the minimum brightness. I'm also happy to see that Samsung have actually doubled the PWM rate, the pulse width modulation, and it's now 492 hertz, which is a touch higher than the iPhone's 480 and should help reduce eye strain, particularly at lower brightnesses. And finally, while both screens obviously support HDR, as usual for Samsung, it misses out on Dolby Vision, instead of favoring their own HDR10 Plus format, which just isn't as widely used. Whereas the iPhone gets regular HDR10 and Dolby Vision, which you can also record in with the camera. But whatever you're watching, playing or scrolling through, both are excellent screens. Although I am now a bit spoiled by these reflections or lack of them. So for me, I'm gonna give this just to the S24 Ultra. So that is the outside, but as my mum always said, it's what's on the inside that counts. And we've got the A17 Pro from Apple and the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy from Qualcomm. Okay, so if I was gonna be really simplistic and reductive, I would just run a Geekbench 6 benchmark and tell you that the iPhone is a little bit faster. But then in 3D Mark, the more demanding graphics test, the S24 Ultra actually wins. But really, as fun as it is to nerd out over benchmarks and see which one's a few percent faster and opens an app a tenth of a second quicker than the other one, it really doesn't matter. These are both exceptionally fast phones and both chips will run every app, every game from their respective app stores as flawlessly as possible right now. The real world difference is down to the software, iOS versus Android, how well apps are optimized for each. I would probably say the S24 running Android 14 feels a touch quicker overall, mostly down to the slightly faster animations. And you can also speed these up even more in the settings. And of course you can install different skins and you've got far more customization options on Android, but I'll come back to the software in a minute. What I have noticed though, is that while the Snapdragon chip is pretty ubiquitous among Android flagships, because of the lack of fragmentation with Apple devices, you do tend to see slightly better optimization, particularly for games on the iPhone. For example, Honkai Star Rail, I'm not sure if you play that, it's like Genshin Impact, uh, that has a 120 FPS mode on the iPhone, tops out at 60 on all Android phones. They both support ray tracing in games. You can hook up external uh, controllers like the Backbone controller, which I think is really neat. But also the iPhone has started to offer us some more console level games. You've had Resident Evil 4, Resident Evil Village, Death Stranding. It's just a handful for now, but they are kind of like PS4 level full console games that you can play on your iPhone. However, the advantage with Android and the S3 of Ultra is you can install game streaming apps, you can sideload apps. A lot of that stuff is all locked down on the iPhone, although things are changing very soon uh, with the latest update in Europe, at least on the iPhone, you will be able to install third-party marketplaces. So you'll have access to uh, GeForce Now and Xbox Cloud Gaming, stuff that you could already do on the Android, but it's now coming to iPhones. So things are shifting around a little bit. And I think in terms of gaming, I'd call it a draw. But which one lasts longer? Well, in terms of the battery size, 
the S24 Ultra wins. 5,000 million powers versus just under 4,500. But we all know size isn't everything. It's what you can do with it. And Apple generally is a lot more efficient with their battery because they make the chip, they make the phone, they make the software. In my testing so far, I found that they're pretty neck and neck. I found that the Samsung does last longer if you're just playing back videos, just watching videos all day long, which maybe you are. But in general, sort of more all-rounder use, the iPhone lasts a little bit longer as well. But in terms of non-stop screen on everyday use, you're getting between 10 and 11 hours on both. I would probably say the Samsung just about takes the lead, but it's not significant. Uh, although it does charge faster. Up to 45 watts versus 25 watts, still both appallingly slow compared to some of the competition. But again, the Samsung just edges out in front there. And also not only do you get wireless charging, but you also get reverse wireless charging. So you can top up other devices like your headphones or other phones. However, we do have the pretty good MagSafe ecosystem for wireless charging with the iPhones. So again, I don't think you could base your buying decision on the battery. But let's move on to the big one. The camera, I think for most of us, is like the next big deciding factor. And on paper, the Samsung seems like the better option. We get four lenses versus three, 200 megapixels with the main camera versus 48. We get 8K 30 or even 4K 120 video. But we all know it's not as simple as that. And also there's a lot of subjectivity. You may just prefer how one camera looks, how the photos on one uh, look over the other. Now I am working on a full camera comparison video where I'll do a proper deep dive into these, but there are a few things you need to know. For the iPhone, the big upgrades this year include the five times zoom up from three times last year. We now also get 24 megapixel photos from the main camera rather than 12, and with some clever cropping, a near lossless two times zoom. So photos are sharper, we get better dynamic range and improved low light portraits. And for video, because we now have a USB-C port rather than Lightning, you can connect external storage drives and now shoot ProRes at 4K60. I also love the ability to shoot ProRes video in log, which is definitely more of a pro feature, but you can add different LUTs or color profiles and turn your ordinary iPhone looking video into something a lot more cinematic and professional. But by far the biggest upgrade, I think, is how all photos are now taken with depth information included, meaning you can turn any regular photo into a portrait and vice versa. And even change the focal point and the blur intensity after the fact. Yes, you can add background blur to Samsung photos, but it's artificial blur and it doesn't always work. After saying all that, I don't know if the S24 Ultra's camera grades are as impressive. The headline is they've also switched up the zoom lens. We still have the three times, but they've dropped the 10X in favor of a 5X with a much higher 50 megapixel resolution, bigger sensor and wider aperture than the old 10X. So you actually end up with much better zoom across the board from 3X to 10X and beyond. And while the iPhone's 5X does suddenly give this a run for its money, I would still crown the S24 Ultra the zoom king, especially at longer ranges. But other than that, the camera hardware is identical to last year. The main other difference is the addition of Samsung's Pro Visual Engine, the software, the algorithms behind the scenes. And this does impact every camera, the phone in the back and the selfie up front. And from my testing, we're now getting much faster shutter speed, which I'm very pleased to see because this has been one of my biggest issues with Samsung cameras for years now. It's also smoother switching between lenses, particularly useful when shooting video and zooming in and out. And I've also noticed that video is a lot more stable, particularly at longer range zoom. And if you record at 4K60, you can now switch between all the lenses. Previously, you were locked into the one you started with. So lots of nice refinements, but I would probably argue the iPhone does feel like a bigger upgrade year on year. Which is the best camera between the two? I think the Samsung is more versatile. You have more options, you have better long range zoom. The iPhone though is still my favorite for video, for stabilization, for ProRes, log, cinematic mode. And I do also like the style of iPhone's photos and also the ability to turn any photo into a portrait. Okay, let's have a little play with some video. And uh, this is actually my hometown. This is Wells in Somerset. This is a big old moat around what they call the Bishop's Palace. Now I'm recording this on the S24 and the iPhone, obviously, uh, in 4K60, because that's genuinely how I shoot, because I like to be able to slow it down in the edit afterwards, and I just kind of like the extra smoothness. But no video in Wells is complete without a mention of the swans. So these are actually kind of famous, especially if you've seen the movie Hot Fuzz. They live here, and there's a little bell over here. If I jump up to the five time zoom, and at their feeding time, they will ring that bell, and then someone will give them some food. So 
In fact, this is a pretty good test of the zoom. So these guys are swimming away. This is the one times. Let's go up to the five times on both. Keep walking alongside, see which one's more stable. One times, three on the S24, two on the iPhone, five on both, and then 10 on both. Would you go for the iPhone or the Samsung? You also just have so many more options on the S24. You've got director's view where you can switch between the lenses while filming. You've got a preview of all the cameras. Uh, this is dual record, so you can see what's in front of me and well, my face as well, which is pretty handy if you want a reaction to something. You just can't do any of this on the iPhone. You can also pause your video. You can flip the camera around with the main video to the selfie while recording at 4K60 and then go back to the rear and change all the lenses as well. You just have a lot more flexibility and 8K video. However, I think where the iPhone definitely wins is with its cinematic mode. We do have this portrait video on the Samsung, but in my opinion, they've just never been quite as good as the iPhone. I love this cinematic mode. I kind of wish there was a 4K60 version. I probably use that all the time. But what do you think as I'm awkwardly holding the mic in front of me? Which do you think looks more cinematic and higher quality from the two phones? And do you actually use this mode? And actually one of the upgrades with the Samsung this year is that third party apps like Instagram, TikTok, and Snap can use more of the native camera features like OIS and the laser autofocus. But they're both excellent camera systems and they do offer slightly different things. I'm gonna call it a draw. But of course, any comparison with the S24 Ultra would not be complete without a mention of AI. This is Galaxy for AI, right? But to its credit, there are some very nifty new features. And the first one you saw there is this circle to search. It's not exclusive to the Samsung. It is now available on the latest Pixel with the update. Uh, but this is a quicker way of Google lensing what you've screenshotted or what you've drawn around on your screen. So magic search with Google is pretty cool. We also have new transcription assist. I think this is pretty cool where you can do an audio recording. It'll then transcribe your recording, separate different speakers, and then it can go and summarize the entire conversation, putting it in bullet points. You've got live translations, whether it's via text back and forth or even over the phone. And a lot of this can all be done on device, even if you don't have a internet connection. But my favorite AI features have to do with the camera. I think the one that's the best to show off is instant slow-mo. You can take any video, just press on the screen and give you a slow motion version of the clip, which you can then go into the video editor afterwards, save that slow motion part and export a new clip. You've also got a whole range of AI photo features and also a Photoshop-esque AI gen fill where you can crop and rotate an image and it will fill in the background. You can highlight subjects and then move or resize or just delete them completely and it will fill in the gaps. To be fair, a good amount of this you can also do on the Google Pixel and third-party apps give you options, but I like how seamless and baked in it is to the photo gallery on the S24. However, what makes all that AI a little bit less special is that Samsung say pretty much all, if not all features will also be coming to the S23 series, last year's phones. So it's clearly not an exclusive feature to the S24, but there you go. And breathe. Okay, let's wrap up. And I think the answer is they are both equally good phones. If I was gonna go out and buy one, I think it really comes down to what ecosystem you're in. Do you have a MacBook, an AirPods, or do you have a Galaxy Book, or their uh, Buds Pro, or their Tabs? Apple offer six years of iOS updates where Samsung are promising seven years, but I think really it comes down to the ecosystem and whether you prefer iOS or Android. In terms of the actual phones, I can tell you honestly that right now I do carry both of these with me because I think there are advantages to having both. Uh, although I wouldn't suggest buying both because that's an awful lot of money. Most of the time though, because I do prefer the camera, the look of the camera and the video, and I shoot a lot of video as a content creator, and I'm also pretty invested in the ecosystem because I use a MacBook Pro, I'm more likely to go with the iPhone. But what about you? Which one would you go for? Which do you think is the best phone? Let me know in the comments below. If you've got any questions between these two, also drop a comment. And if you did enjoy this video, a cheeky little like and subscribe would be lovely. I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.